have one thing to say to you all. Cock-a-doodle-doo. Welcome to the Survivor Recap. Survivor, you just love to screw with your viewers, don't you? You go showing those women looking all weak and pathetic, and they're shivering in the cold, and they're going over to ask for ashes and, you know, just a little ember to get some fire, because they're just, they're just such weak, weak women. I got your number, Survivor. Okay, so... We get there. We're on the island. It's raining. It's pathetic. The girls are freezing. The guys are warm and they're cocky as usual. Then we get to the first reward challenge. Bam, bam, bam. One girl after another wins over the guy. Okay, what's the reward challenge? There's a shelf with a bunch of different things like bottles and shells and bags on it and they line it up a certain way they open the screen you look at it you run you go try to duplicate it with the screen down the girls are kicking butt on this except when we come to cat who takes eight tries to get her point i'm still saying that cat is the weakest link on the women's team but still she pulled it off after eight tries she beats troy's on troy and then up comes Christina. She gets the last point. The women win a challenge. Yoo-hoo! Reward. They get fishing equipment and a canoe. Now, this really strikes at the heart of the guys because, you know, they really held that tarp over the girl's head. And they've enjoyed having power and all the benefits of winning and being so freaking cocky. So, the girls are cold and they want to go over to the guys Thing and warm up and the guys are like well we get to use that boat now Jeff had said that's your boat you don't have to share it these guys want in exchange for an ember an ember to be able to take the boat whenever they want it sorry dudes that's asking just a little too much now like I said last week Matt got a good edit because they didn't show him speaking this week he spoke, and he sounded as cocky as ever. His ultimatums to the girls and to all the guys is that if they're going to get embers from us or even stand in front of our fire, they will deliver other things to them. Okay, I keep having to go back to the fact that these guys stole stuff from the girls the very first day out, yet they seem to feel entitled to any little small thing that the girls get. All right, and then there's Colton. Colton says, I agree with Nat because I'm a Republican and I don't believe in handouts. Well, Colton, how about that immunity idol that was given to your sorry butt when you were crying to the girls? Let's go back, people. Everybody keeps saying on the Internet, Colton's playing a great game. It wasn't Colton's idea to get rid of Matt. It was Sabrina. Sabrina's went to the weakest guy on the guy's team, the most pathetic, crying, do-nothing guy, and said, if I give you this idol, you have to get rid of a strong guy. This wasn't Colton's big plan. It was Sabrina's. So Colton is all, yeah, I'm not going to give them anything. They're going to have to earn it. Earn it? like you earned your immunity idol, whatever, Colton. Moving on, the sun comes out, the girls go fishing, they catch fish. All of a sudden, they believe in themselves again. Way to go, girls. Now we get to the immunity challenge. And it is one of those blindfold your people and then have a collar and go get an item, bring it back, and then make a puzzle thing. Sabrina is the caller, and oh boy, does she suck at it. I love Sabrina. Love Sabrina, but she's not made for calling. That's just one thing. The guys are so far ahead, it's ridiculous. They have like seven or eight minutes to work on their puzzle before the girls even get back to start working on their puzzle. But the girls get back, and working together, they're helping Sabrina. She's putting it together, and she's just clicking them in there, and the girls pull it out massive comeback and beat the guys and so big celebration now the guys have lost twice in short order and the girls are rejuvenated now the funny part about this is matt matt says you know i'm kind of looking forward to tribal council because i've spent eight days building up a strong power on this on this island and i want to be able to execute it tonight 
Er, wrong. Back the train up, Matt. You are so oblivious, so cocky at your own greatness that you can't see what's going on around you until it's too late. So, back at the island, there are the plain regular Joes, I guess you want to call them. Some call them the misfits. And they're standing around and they're talking. Now, Colton has a hatred of Ben. I think it's Ben. He doesn't like him. He says he's too ghetto. Well, that's nice of you. And he just can't stand him. So he t declares to everyone that he has to go. He's just, he's sneaky, he says. He's not sneaky. This guy's just plain, like, weird. Anyhow, Colton, because of his personal dislike of him, tries to convince everybody that he's the one that needs to go. And um, Tarzan just worships at Colton's feet. I don't quite get that, but if Colton says it, Tarzan goes for it. So um, up comes Jaybird of the Strong Guy Alliance, and he's told summarily, look, you either vote with us or you go home, one of the two, because you're not on the right side anymore. We have the power. And um, he says, okay, if I have to, I will. Up comes Matt. So what are you all talking about? Well, we're talking strategy, says Tarzan. Colton's all like, oh, shh, pretend you're not talking. And, like, Matt couldn't tell Colton. Matt could tell. Anybody could tell. You're on an island. Five of you standing together right before tribal council. Hmm, what's going on there? They're talking strategy. So Tarzan says, yeah, you're interrupting us, and we're talking about you. So Matt walks away, and then he pulls Troy, Troy Zan, aside to tell him that they are the roosters and they want to get rid of the chickens and he considers Troy a rooster with him and that it's better to be a rooster and not a chicken. So all I can say right now is Troy, I have to give the man respect because he walks away and he goes, that guy's a jerk. Yes, at least on the island, he is a jerk. I don't know about real life, but on the island, he is one arrogant, full of himself, do it my way or the highway jerk. So Troy goes back to everybody else and says, look, Matt really wants to do this, at which point Matt wants to push everybody around and Matt's the one you really need to get rid of, at which point <clears throat> um, Colton says, all right, well, if that's the one you want to get rid of, then we'll get rid of him. Get to tribal council, and Colton announces that he has the idol to everybody and that he's going to use it. Now, I think this was a really stupid move. It was one thing to say you had the idol. It was another thing entirely to say, I'm going to use it today because I'm not stupid, and then not use it. Look, don't promise you're going to use it and then not use it because eyebrows went up all over the place when he didn't use it. So we can't trust a word that comes out of your mouth, Colton. Again, at the tribal council, Tarzan is kind of like kissing Colton's butt, not quite getting that. And Matt tries to say, you know, Colton's the most dangerous. And I don't get where everybody thinks Colton's so great. I really don't. And um, so, of course, they vault Matt out. The rooster done flew the coop. Matt's gone, and we have a new week of Survivor to look forward to. Looks like Monono's going a little nutso over there. But, you know, the Survivor previews are always deceptive. You know how they like to screw with their people. All right, that's it. Great job, ladies. Good comeback. I'm proud of you, and yes, I'm biased. And, oh, by the way, the guy's name is Bill. I know. I said Ben. It's Bill. That's Diana's recap of Survivor. I'll see you next week. Bye.